Jesus. Yes, you are, and you're gonna like it! Oh! Yes, indeed! <laughs> Please have your tickets in hand and gather your belongings. You are now boarding the crazy train! <laughs> this is In Your Face. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Dixie's very own little darling, the female mouth of the South, Rebel Meddler. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for boarding the train at stations W4CY, W4VET, K4HD, and all of our affiliated stations. Woo! Take your seats, people. Get ready to rock, because we have a very special guest today. And just wait till you find out who he is. Ooh, yes. We are starting our journey. This is an interactive ride, so feel free to join the chat room. Hello, chat room. How y'all doing? <laughs> Woo! Fun stuff, fun stuff check out the ITV. We have selected some very, very ooh, fun stuff for you to enjoy today for your entertainment viewing. Yes, 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 yes. Ooh, wow. This is going to be a very heightened day. We also offer you the availability to call or Skype in. The call-in number is 561-623-9429. On Skype, look for W4CY Radio. You can voice your opinion, speak your mind, call in to ask our guest questions. You got it. This is the ability I'm giving to you. Woo! That's right. Just call in. I like to talk. I uh, what? Yes, I love. Stop that. <laughs> Chat room's already kicking. I like to shoot the shit, and I welcome controversy. Bring it! If you got the stones, that is. God, God, his family, friends, and everyone listening. Please forgive me for anything and everything that's about to come out of my mouth. I say this before the show because, quite frankly, I can be a bitch. Don't fuck with me, fellas! This ain't my first time at the rodeo. Oh, no, indeed. It is certainly not my first time at the rodeo. It's... I've never been to that kind of rodeo. Get your mind out the gutter. I had to put that in there. All right, folks, are you guys ready? I know I am. I'd like to welcome our guest today. Mr. Clifton Brown. Woo! How you doing? I'm doing great. How y'all doing? Oh, we are. We are doing. <laughs> we are crazy doing. So, wow, we're going to jump right in and we're going to talk about you. Today is going to be about Clifton Brown. We're going to let our listeners, oh, by the way, we have listeners worldwide. Right now we have people checking in from Belgium and, oh my goodness, Russia. I can't even sit here and think about everybody that's here. Hi, chat room. Welcome, welcome. Now, Clifton, let's tell everybody about you and your band and everything that you got going on. Where do you want to well, start? I'm from, uh, I'm, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I grew up uh, listening to traditional country music like, you know, George Jones and Conway Twitty and Merle Haggard and George Strait and that kind of stuff. So, uh, I put a band together about 20 years ago, and uh, just been playing locally. And then we decided to go cut a uh, a country music album, and we went to Nashville, Tennessee, and cut us a new album. And it's out; and it's doing really well for us. Uh, I think the traditional sound of country music is coming back. I hope so because I was listening to some country music the other day, and it's like, are you kidding me? This is not country. What happened Absolutely. there? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, and that's right. I mean, you know, country music used to be about the songs used to have meaning, you know, I, I could tell you, you know, where I was at the first time I heard don't take the girl, you know, I could tell you who was riding in my truck with me at the time. And so songs like that just stick to you in your life. And these new songs just seem to be just rhyming words that just, you know, somebody's just out there trying to make a few dollars. Yeah. Some of them don't even rhyme to be honest with you. It's pretty freaking yeah, bad. Honestly. <laughs> right. I mean, when you click on the country channel and you know, the country channels, they're different. You're going to know when you come across country. But I was flipping through the channels and I looked and I'm like, wait a minute, I just passed. No, that wasn't country. What happened? It was bad. It was like, yeah. no, Absolutely. this is not country. You know, even, even one of the local radio stations here uh, where I'm from, you know, they, they wouldn't play me because they said my, radio, my album was too country. 
good. Two country, go ahead. Yeah. You can plug them if you'd like. Um, what station wouldn't play you? This is crazy. Uh, yeah, it was, it's called the, their, their radio station is called Today's Country, and they wouldn't even play me because they said I was too country. <laughs> they might have been one of those channels I skipped through playing that stuff that God knows didn't sound like country to me. There's nothing wrong with good country, all right? And that's what differentiates country from other things, okay? Uh, now, I listen to a whole bunch of music. I'm not knocking any genre, believe me. But country holds a special place in my heart. Now, how long have you been doing this? Well, I started right out of high school, and it's been about 20 years now. I've been uh, I've been doing country music, and uh, it wasn't until I just put this last band together about three years ago. They're absolutely unbelievable. I got one of the best steel guitar player, uh, probably in the South. And this guy's phenomenal. He's play, he's played in Branson. He's played in Nashville. He's done all the the uh, you know, the playing of with all the big stars and things. So he's he's great and, and, and we got a, a hot guitar player and you know, a great backup vocalist and, you know, we just really put this band together to go out and just do like a country show band and we're having the time of our life. Awesome. Now, this is not the only thing you do. Obviously you do something other than country because hey, we all in entertainment we gotta make a living. <laughs> so yeah. what else do you do? I am a motorcycle police officer. I've been doing this for 13 years now, and actually, currently, as we're talking, I'm actually escorting a funeral right now. So uh, this is what I do full time, and uh, the sheriff I work for is such a great guy. He allows me to go do my music, and and uh, you know he he stands behind me 100, percent and uh, he he's he really believing in us, and I think we got a really good thing going around this area. I think so too. I tell you what. Ladies and gentlemen, the listening audience, we are going to play our first song by Clifton Brown and the Rusty Bucket Band. Did I say that right? Absolutely. The Rusty Bucket Band. The first song That's we're going to play for you is Easy Living. We're going to let y'all listen to this and we'll be right back. It looks pretty simple when I saw him picking on TV. So I bought me a telly and a new set of guitar strings. Well, I learned a few chords and I called a few friends. And we got a little gig playing on weekends. But it wasn't much fun hauling all that equipment. It's a hard, hard way to make an easy living So we got a little better and the date started pouring in And the groupies got hotter and it bothered all of our girlfriends And some half-naked hottie hopped up on stage Followed by the lead picker's fiancé and a few minutes later he told us he was quitting And it's a hard, hard way to make an easy living Oh, it might look greener from the other side Breaking at it over your fence But once you're in it you'll realize Something about it don't make sense And we made a video Stuck it on CMT Now our lawyer told us It'll make a lot of royalty Well we made a hundred grand But he built us a million And it's a hard, hard way To make an easy living I'm picking that Breaking at it over 
But everyone is telling us we better hit the big time soon. Cause our record deal lots of cool clocks are ticking. And it's a hard, hard way to make an easy living. It's a hard, hard way to make an easy living. Absolutely love it. Clifton, that was wonderful. What Thank you. What gave y'all the inspiration to write that song? Well, that's a song about being a musician. You know, it's never, uh, it's, it's, everybody thinks that, you know, oh, they're so lucky they get to get on stage and sing. They just don't realize how much hard work you put into it and how life-changing it is whenever, you know, some people, when they get a little fame behind them, they lose where they come from. And it's like the part where they talked about the, uh, the guitar player, you know, his uh, some half naked hottie hopped up on stage and was followed by the lead picker's fiance. You know, it's just it's funny because that stuff really happens. And then the next thing you know, you put all this work in with this guitar player, and he comes up to you and says, "Hey, man, I either got to choose my wife or my fiance or playing music, and I got to go." So it's like then you got to start all back over again. So it's uh, it was just a funny song talking about how hard the music industry is, you know, with all the. Uh, different things you got to go through with, you know, the lawyer told us we're, we're about to be rich and we made a hundred thousand dollars and the lawyer charged us a million to, to, to uh, do all the paperwork. So it's just, it's, it's a, it was a funny little song just talking about, uh, it's a hard way to, to make an easy living, you know, because everybody Absolutely. thinks that all these guys do is just ride around on the bus and get out there and get to play music. But it's a lot of, a lot of business stuff behind it too, you know? Yes. There's, and they don't understand that. Um, we go through that being radio personalities as well. It's it's not just it's not just poof all gl- glitz and glamour. Okay, it takes a lot to do this. We have to put a lot behind the shows. And one thing we we have to make people understand: please, by all means, buy the music. Okay, I have put in the chat room two places that you can buy the music. You can go to cliftonbrownmusic.com. It's Let's see. I don't know, right CliftonBrownMusic.com. Go to more, and the music thing will pop down. You can buy the CD right there. You can also buy it where I bought it. Country, live it, love it, breathe it on Amazon. I put that link in the chat room too, folks. This is good country music. I mean, really toe tapping good stuff. I. This is country. And I, I want to thank you for putting it out there like this because, you know, it's it's different. It's nice. It's the good country music that people are ready for. And well, you guys uh, are doing you know, wonderful. Well, the, you know, the thing I, I wanted to do with that album was, and that's why I named it Country Live It, Love It, Breathe It, because, I mean, that's what I do. And, and I remember playing all these big clubs, you know, growing up and things where the dance floor would just be packed with dancers and we don't see that anymore. These these this new generation of young people, they don't they don't know how to two step, they don't know how to jitterbug, they don't know how to, to do line dancing like when I was coming up, that was real popular and and uh nowadays when you go out to the clubs and you're up there playing your, your heart out, you look out in the crowd and everybody's on their cell phone and they're Snapchat and text messaging and it's like how do these young kids have a social life and how are they ever going to meet somebody or without getting out there and asking somebody to dance or, you know, or I just, uh, I guess it's just a generation gap. And uh, I just figured if we could make some toe tapping, swinging music that uh, maybe it might get them out there dancing a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, totally. I was talking about that on Rebel Dromper Room earlier. People don't enjoy the moment. Okay. Now, grant you, I see people, you know, at concerts are holding up their cell phones and everything else, but they're looking at the cell phone screen instead of looking at the artist and the, the performance on the stage. People, you paid right. for the concert, enjoy the concert. Okay. And right. we have some people in the chat room saying mus- uh, music artists don't even make much money anymore. They don't. Okay. Just like entertainers, we don't. It, we're not in it for the money, first of all. And <laughs> I don't know any entertainer or musician that's in it for the money because then they're in the wrong business. Okay. Because you do. By the well, time you finish paying everybody, including, you know, like you said, lawyers, accountants, this, that, and the other, 
the venue's got to pay you. And by the time you get your cut, it's not, it's, it's wow. You know, you're thinking about, wow, I did this for what? <laughs> and right, you do yeah, it exactly because you right. love it. You do it because you love it. And, and I will tell you this, everybody has hobbies, you know, and here in South Louisiana, we have a lot of people who like to fish and hunt. And, you know, my father-in-law is one of them. He spends thousands of dollars a year on duck hunting leases and all that kind of stuff. But that's his hobby. Well, my hobby is playing music, and I just like it where it's, you know, it's um, it's it actually every now and then I break even. And it's like, wow, you know, I actually made a little money tonight, and it's it's, it's such a different uh, a thing than, than uh, a lot of people waste money on hobbies. And a lot of people do model cars or, or antique cars or whatever. Every now and then we'll break even, and, and boy, we just we do cartwheels over that. Absolutely. You know, my engineer is part of a country rock duo, and they play down really? in Florida. Yes, absolutely. And we were talking about, I mean, I would love to get Chad and Heather up here to do a few shows, but the travel time and everything else to get them up here, it's like, wow, you really got to you gotta book a lot just to get them up here. And being obviously being a show engineer, it's hard to leave work, you know, so it, it's hard. It's definitely yeah, hard to and, do this. That's absolutely the truth. I know, um, uh, you know, that kind of music that you're hearing and, and that you're playing today is, um, uh, really big in Texas. Um, uh, Texas loves that kind of music because they still have folks over there that like to dance and things. And they've been trying to get us right there in Texas. And, um, uh, just, uh, just the trip, you know, it was four hours away from my house to, to be in Beaumont, you know, when, when you got a six piece band, you know, you got to get motel rooms and you got to feed them and you got to travel time and, and things. Mm. It's just, uh, and then when you, and when you send them that kind of a price to people are like, well, who do you think you are? I mean, you know, we haven't even heard your band yet and you're wanting to charge us this. I'm like, that's us breaking even, you know, <laughs> I mean, when you, when you talk about fuel and, 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 uh, you know, just, uh, motel rooms and things, that, that's just, that's trying to break even. And, and, uh, so it's, it's a hard world right now with, with the music business. So, uh, you know, when I grew up, you know, Garth Brooks was big and George Strait and those guys. And, and when they would come to a concert, get the ticket, you had to be within that top 45 minutes to get a ticket or you wouldn't get the ticket. You know, yes. it, was just that, it was just that crazy. And nowadays they're canceling shows because they didn't sell enough tickets to it. You know, it's just crazy. It's a shame. And, and that's the problem. Technology kind of created that part of the problem because they make it so easily available and ready on everything it just drives you nuts speaking of driving you nuts i want y'all to listen to the next song we have picked out for you the next song is next sunday's paper we'll be right back if i could buy next sunday's paper today well i know what stock to put some stock in i know just how much i'd make I can go out and get a ticket, but I ain't much on the lotto players. Of course, you can't call it gambling if I had next Sunday's paper. If I could see next Sunday's paper right now, hey, I know who's going to get a DUI before the weekend rolls around. I know who to tell to catch a cab or lighten up on the Jaeger. Well, I might tie one on if I could see next Sunday's paper. If I could have next Sunday's paper before they write it, there'd be some major changes made before they buy it. I'd be a big old rich you billionaire, give half or more to the man upstairs, be the Nostradamus of our generation. Well, if I had next Sunday's paper, If I had next Sunday's paper in my hand I know the score of every ball game Before the first fan hits the stand And if my team is gonna come up short This week I'd be a traitor And I'd be a winner If I had next Sunday's paper If I could have next Sunday's paper Before they write it There'd be some major changes made before they buy it. I'd be a big old rich you billionaire. Give half or more to the man upstairs. Be the Nostradamus of our generation. Well, 
If I had next Sunday paper If I could read next Sunday paper right now I know who's gonna kick the bucket Before they blow their last breath out Well I can call them up and warn them all To touch base with their maker Well I might save some souls If I could see next Sunday's paper Well if I had next Sunday's paper Before they write it There'd be some major changes made Before they buy it I'd be a big old rich hill billionaire Give half or more to the man upstairs Be the Nostradamus of our generation well, If I had next Sunday's paper But I ain't got next Sunday's paper You may not have next Sunday's paper, but right here, right now, we have Clifton Brown. Awesome, awesome song. I love it. It, you know, that was that was just so cool. Now we have some chatter in the chat room. They are asking um, things like, well, they re- they had to raise the prices of tickets for concerts, and they're saying concerts aren't like they used to be. Well, nothing's like it used to be. I mean, they took the good stuff and kind of twisted it out to you know nothing but the performances are still as awesome and rocking as ever okay it's how people perceive things and again if you're sitting there looking at your telephone screen so you can post it wherever you want or whatever you're not getting the full effect you should be looking at the performance on the stage and that's where it is people living in the moment very very true i mean it's um you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, being on, you know, even if you're a public speaker or something, you're up there giving a speech and there's people in the back of them talking. I mean, it's just it's just one of those things that, you know, just, just be respectful. If you're going to pay for a seminar or something, just go there and enjoy it and put your phone down for five minutes and just enjoy something, you know? Absolutely. So what inspired next Sunday's paper? That sounds like oh, man. Well, somebody was having fun. Well, I, I called I called some of my friends in Nashville and told them I was looking for like a little funny kind of a Brad Paisley type song, you know, just something's got some humor to it. And uh, they pitched me that song next Sunday's paper. And of course, it had that new sound, that that new kind of drum machine kind of sound, uh, new country, I guess they call it. And uh, so we got in the studio with it and uh, we, we changed it all up and put some steel guitar in it, some fiddle, and we was like, Man, let's make this thing country. And we had a great time with it. It was really a fun kind of, uh, kind of made it like a Waylon Jennings kind of old sound. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that song. And it was just a real funny song, you know, about, you know, if I had the paper from the, from the week coming up, I'd be able to, you know, not get that DWI and not get, the, you know, not get that <laughs> ticket. And, and uh, you know, funny things, you know, like um, I'd even, lottery. you know, uh, I'd win, I, that's right, I'd win the lottery. I could do all this stuff. And it's just, it was just a funny song, and I, I like um, I like having humor, and uh, with a good old beat behind it. So it was a uh, it was one of the ones I, ha- I definitely had to go with. Absolutely. Now I have some questions for you. Uh, they're asking who inspired you. Oh uh, well, I mean, when I grew up, my grandfather was a uh, big influence to me. He he was a country music star. I mean, he didn't ever sing, but he he played fiddle, and he played with some of the biggest names in country music, and. Um, and as I grew up, uh, he played, uh, he could play fiddle, guitar, you know, banjo, piano, all that stuff. And I was just around it, you know, every weekend and during the summers when I would stay with my grandparents, uh, he'd always have a guitar and he would always pick it up or, or sit behind the piano and he would tear it up. And I would just, I was always just super impressed with it. So as a, as a younger, uh, man, I, I grabbed a guitar and just, uh, let him show me a few things on it. And it, it just took off from there. And, and uh, that was one of the things that um, inspired me to, to push my music career. Cool. We have a question here. Just came in. What is your favorite instrument to play? You know, honestly, I'm a guitar player, um, but I love the piano. I think, to me, the piano. Uh, if 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 I had to go in front of a big crowd and sing, 
I'd rather be behind a piano because it, they're just so much full sound comes out of a piano. You got the, the, the low keys and the, the, you know, the high keys and things. And, um, it's just, it, it, to me, it's a more fuller instrument than a guitar. So, uh, I definitely love the piano. Now, as far as country music, uh, I love the steel guitar. I think it's the, uh, the coolest instrument in, in a country band. As a matter of fact, if you, uh, if folks go to my, my Facebook page and, and like it, they'll see on the, uh, on the Clifton Brown and Rusty Bucket Band Facebook page, my picture on there shows a guy being arrested. And it says in the captions, it's a little cartoon, and it says, what does he do? He said, he's in a country band without a steel guitar player. And it's, it's a really funny little, <laughs> a little picture. Because, you know, I don't think he can play country music without a steel guitar player. Absolutely. Uh, folks, I'll get that. I'll get that link up in the chat room in a moment. I have another question. We have, what is your favorite song out there? Oh, just forever? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, uh, one of my, I guess one of my all-time favorite songs was George Strait when he did Baby Blue. Uh, I, that was one of the songs that, that, that made me uh, just say I want to be a country singer because that was about the era I was in. Uh, I was probably late junior high, early high school when that song came out, and I just remember um, how smooth his voice was and how how the song was very, very, you know, just simple and just pretty. And uh, it's always stuck with me. I do it in my live shows, and it's just one of those songs that's kind of like um, just left a, a mark in me. That it was kind of the first time I was introduced to like traditional, really good smooth country music and uh, ever since then I've just been one of my all time favorites so is that your favorite to do or is that do you have no, that's probably my another... favorite of all time my, one of my favorite songs to do and you can believe this or not is uh, swinging we love to do swinging it's an old John Anderson song <laughs> and when we fire that thing up of course we do it a little faster than the record but when we do it up um I can and I do like impersonations and stuff, and I and I, like halfway through the song, I'll we'll introduce the guys in the band, we'll introduce John Anderson, and I'll turn around and if I come back up to the mic. I'll I'll try to sound like John Anderson as best as I can, and it, the people just they love it. You know, it's we just like to have fun like that and keep the crowd into it. So cool, awesome, and I know another song's coming up. This song is Cheap Imitation. Folks, give a listen to this, and we'll be right back. Seems like the band was playing every song we ever danced to And when she walked in there was something about her that made me think of you She reached out to me with her eyes Said there ain't nothing money came by Maybe since you've been gone, I just can't be alone. Every woman I run into, they're just a cheap imitation of you. They don't shine, they don't glow, they don't sparkle like you do. Once you've had a diamond, a rhinestone just won't do. It's a blue night. Red light special A cheap imitation of you Maybe I shopped around All over town And no one suited me But I come to find The sweetest kind Of love comes free Some look real good For the price Nothing bargain only lasts for night. Hey, it's all just a fling once you've had the real thing. Second best won't do. They're just a cheap imitation of you. They don't shine, they don't glow, they don't sparkle like you do. Once you've had a diamond, a rhinestone just won't do. It's a blue night, red light special, a cheap imitation. 
expectation of you. Well, there's no cheap imitation here. We have the real Clifton Brown right here with us. And you know what? I I kind of felt like I should be on the dance floor in the arms of the right person just twirling around with that song. That, my friend, is a get up and dance to song, as with all of your songs. I don't see how yeah, people dude. aren't up on their feet. This is awesome. Yeah, if you can't dance to that, then uh, you got two left feet. Even if you had two left feet, you should definitely get up and dance to that. You know, it's just yeah. my mind when I hear songs, I can put up the uh, music videos. I mean, people like music videos. What's that? Oh, you know, back in the day, they had music videos. I can make an awesome music video to that song because it, it just flows. Wonderful. We have another question in the chat room. Who would you like to do a duo with? Who? What country artist would you dream of doing a duo with? Uh, like doing a duet? Uh, yes, like, I think that's what they mean. Oh man, I, man, I would, I would just see. I, I'm, I'm just old school. I love Reba McIntyre. I love Patty Loveless and Martina McBride. Any of those, those, those people have, have have just a natural singing ability, and I would love to be on the stage with them and, um, you know, do a song together. I just, I, I love that old country uh, Leanne Womack just the, all those folks that when they when they when they step away from the microphone singing and they they talk to you they just have that natural country sound I would mm -hmm. love to be on stage with any of those kind of people when you get to get on stage with Reba I want to be there please because <laughs> oh man <laughs> you know I think I I'd pass have out. been amazed by her she is like amazing her dolly it's just like uh, wow if if you could ever be in the presence of greatness absolutely you know? And speaking of being in the presence of greatness, where can people find Clifton Brown and the Rusty Bucket band playing? Well, we play all over. We play um, all over the state of Louisiana. We do all the fairs and festivals as they go around the state. We just got in touch with Mississippi. Uh, we're we're going to be uh, going over to Mississippi this year for their fairs and festivals. And we're just now getting booked on the east side of Texas, um, all around the Beaumont area and Lake Charles, Louisiana, and that kind of stuff. And so... Um, Things are getting good. It looks like we're uh, we're looking at getting us a bus right now, so we're trying to so we can all pile up in one vehicle and and roll out. So uh, it looks like things are, are starting to to turn the right way. It, um, we're like we're getting a lot more country um, playing on a lot of the uh, independent radio stations across the United States, and we greatly appreciate that. We definitely miss it. Um, you know, a lot of these big radio stations and things that are just um, told what to play instead of helping local folks out and and uh, so we we appreciate the independent stations that are playing us and and it's doing a great job for us and 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 thanks is really not enough from me. I mean it's just, it's a way for me to get out there and, and express my music and without them I couldn't do it. So they just don't know how much I appreciate it. Well, we have definitely put you. My show syndicated right now. We are live on W4CY, W4VET, K4HD, um, and. Of course, you could listen later on iHeart. We are around the world. You have now been played around the world. And we're going to oh, keep on awesome. playing you because I absolutely love your sound. And I think it's so awesome. Now, are you going to be at the Cajun Country Jam this year? No. Uh, the Cajun Country Jam, I, 
I don't know if they're going to do it again this year. Um, I don't know what's going on with the, uh, the, the facilities. Uh, here in South Louisiana, we had a, a catastrophic flood that came through last year. Yeah, no, and, we lost uh, everything. At the end of last year. Yeah, and, and I'm not too – me and my family, we lost everything we own. And we had six feet of water in our house, and, I mean, we it, it pretty much put us in a standstill. So for this album to come out, uh, we had just received the album from Nashville. We had uh, some copies sent to our house. We lost everything. We lost the album. We lost – and if it wasn't for the great people that we was doing business with who called me and said, hey, man, we understand you, you're in that flood zone. How did you come out? I said, well, we lost everything we own. And they said, hey, look. You know, we got 300 CDs coming to you at no cost. Just get back on your feet. Just let us know you need something. I mean, without great people like that in the world, I would have been just out. And um, so it got us back on our feet. We just moved in our house two weeks ago. So with all that being said, some of the venues around here, as far as the facilities where they have a lot of the big concerts and stuff, has been housing people or, or being used for shelters or whatever. So a lot of the uh, venues have been changed. I don't know if the Cajun Country Jam is going to. I just I just did a uh, a deal with the promoter of the Cajun Country Jam this weekend. We Our did a show with Doug Stone. Right <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Uh, and we we uh, we backed up. We uh, we opened up for Doug Stone, and then Doug just used our band to play. And we had a great time. And uh, so after that, um, you know, Doug and I went and did a little private party in, in Baton Rouge, and we had a we had a blast. And the guy's a super talented man, and um, so far as the uh, Cajun Country Jam, I don't know if um, I'm going to have to get with Scott and make sure that um, if the venue hasn't changed or the date maybe has changed. And, uh, but the I think last they was talking about were... the date changing, and he was unsure about you know the ability to do it this year. But we're hoping because we definitely, Absolutely. definitely enjoy the Cajun Country Jam. And anyone who wants to help sponsor the shows, make sure to contact. You can contact me. You can contact Scott Ennis. We would Absolutely. definitely like to see this go on because Scott definitely does an amazing job. He's a, he's a good friend he, of mine. He, he does a great job and he, he brings in talent. Uh, you know, he always brings in these guys that can just get up there and just, and you know, last year we had Billy Dean, we had Lori Morgan, we had, you know, Andy Griggs and John Conley. And I mean, just, just unbelievable performances by these folks. And if you like country music, you hang out with Scott Ennis, he'll hook you up with the right people. I can tell you that. Absolutely. So y'all did just do a show this weekend on Saturday, right? We did. We did a show with uh, Duck Stone. Yeah. And um, so my band, I'm telling you, these guys are, are by far, I've, I've been playing and seeing bands played around this area for a long time. And these guys are absolutely incredible. We uh, Every third Saturday, we do a country music show. Uh, it's like a Grand Ole Opry show. And we have to learn 26 simple? songs. That's that's that soon, yes. Uh, Let we everybody do that, know uh, how show. to get there. We it wanna, is called the Grand Country Junction. Bit. Yeah, the Grand Country Junction in Satsuma, Louisiana. The third Saturday of every month. If you want country music, that's the only place around here you're going to find it. It's a theater seated uh, facility. It holds about 350 people. It is absolutely incredible. It's a family show. We pull songs out from far as back as Hank Williams Sr. all the way up to, we kind of stop around the 90s when country music started shifting. And um, we do George Strait, Tracy Bird, Mark Chestnut, uh, you know, Gene Watson. We play George Jones, all them kind of uh, songs, and the people just absolutely love it. So uh, we do that every third Saturday. But as far as the band, we have to learn all these songs once a month. And these guys are absolutely just gunslingers. I mean, they all read uh, the Nashville Number System charts, and they get up there and just knock these songs out. We rehearsed the day of the show, and, I mean, that, it's like a record. They're unbelievable. So that's, that's how Scott calls us for all these shows and stuff, and that's why we back. You know, we just backed Mickey Gilley and, and uh, John Conley and Jamie O'Neill, and uh, so we had a great time with that, and then we just did the Doug Stone show. And from what I understand, he's got some uh, some other big stars looking to be coming in here soon, uh, some Daryl Singletary, Doug Supernall, and those guys. So it looks like we're going to be learning some more songs here real soon. Absolutely. That is awesome. I know Scott's got something going on with Loverboy coming up soon, too. Are you guys going to be there? No, ma'am. We already had a show booked, actually, with Jamie O'Neill that night. We're going to be playing with her. Uh, she's coming to town, and we're going to be uh, performing with her that night. Where at? At Rack in Urbanville. 
awesome. Very awesome. All right, we want to get all the songs in that we can today. We're going to play Baby Put Your Clothes On. We'll be right back. Hey, baby, put your clothes on And put on those brand new shoes I want to take you downtown I've got a little blue To a country song I love to show you all Baby, put your clothes on We've been sitting around here Doing nothing Baby, we can use a little Bell buckle rubbing With the lights are low And the music's fine It wouldn't hurt us none To have a little you and me time Baby, put your clothes on Paint up those pretty Fine, it wouldn't hurt us none to have a little you and me time. Baby, put your clothes on. Put on those brand new shoes. I want to take you downtown. I've got a little blues to lose. I want to see you dancing. Swinging to a country song. I love to show you all. Baby, put your clothes on. Well, that's keeping it out of the adult realm there. I, I, <laughs> so many things that could have come up. And in the nature of my adult nature show, we got to ask you some crazy questions you can choose not to answer if you don't want to. Okay. What do you wear to bed? <laughs> well, honestly, absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, loving it. Absolutely. All right. And another question was, what are you wearing right now? You told us you were doing a... Uh, funeral procession so i'm assuming he's wearing a police uniform right absolutely i got my motorcycle uniform on like you know uh we uh got my bulletproof vest on so i'm and definitely uh i'm at work we definitely want you to stay safe out there ladies and gentlemen please respect the badge they are actually there to help and not all of them are bad all right so yeah. we want you to tell us something i know there's some crazy ones out there that let some things get to their head but not everybody is like that no, we we like to try to remind people there is good out there tell Absolutely. me something that you have never mentioned in any other interview ever well uh i've never mentioned this before uh, we did a show uh 19 19- 98 i did a show with a guy named merle Haggard, and um i got to open up for him and one of the things that that helped me in my songwriting career um was something that he told me uh right before he walked on stage um i i got a, a guitar that i get signed by all the different artists that we open up for and he said he was signing my guitar and i said mr Haggard, i said i just want to let you know that i'm a big fan i've always been a big fan and i said your songs just are so pure and they're so rich and 
you, you know, I, I just, how do you, how do you get those songs to light? I mean, what, how does it come to you? And I'll never forget this. He looked over at me and he handed my Sharpie back to me and he said, hell son, I live those songs. And I was just like, somebody just reached up there and slapped me across my face. I was like, are you kidding me? And then he said, you know, the song about the, the warden led the prisoner down the hallway. He said, that, that really happened. That's a true story. And I was like, Oh my God, this guy, you know, you know, and then when you do a little research on him, he, he didn't have the greatest childhood and he was arrested quite a few times. And, and, uh, so a lot of the songs that you hear that he did or he wrote was just songs that came from the heart. And, um, so after the flood and after my family and I lost everything we owned and I had to see my wife sitting out by the road, uh, holding our, our wedding album that we just, you know, and all my kids pictures that we never would never see again. And she was crying and I had to literally, you know, pick her up and tell her everything was going to be okay. And, and, um, I went inside and, and Scott Ennis called me and said, man, we got to write a song. And, and we did, we wrote a song called, how do you stop the water when it's here to steal your past? And, um, John Schneider picked that song up and it was just a couple months ago that I get a phone call and said, Hey man, uh, John Schneider is singing our song tonight on the Grand Ole Opry. So when you write a song from the heart, it doesn't take long to, um, for it to go somewhere and i'll never forget the night that merle Hager told me that and and it stuck with me and, and it's really helped me out in my career absolutely and i see your career going lots of places because you are an amazing singer you are an amazing performer and your band is awesome it is the end of the show already oh my goodness i'm so sorry time flies so quickly Clifton Brown, thank you for being here with us, and I'd love to have you back again. I have one quick question. What are your three favorite things in your fridge? Crazy questions from the listeners. Oh, in my fridge. Uh, I love mayonnaise on my sandwiches. Uh, I drink a lot of water. There's a lot of water, and I like Dijon spicy mustard. Absolutely. All right, folks, there you go. I hope we have brought you to know Clifton Brown better. Make sure to buy his music, listen to it always, and enjoy. This is our last song we're going to play for from him. It is You Never Know Just How Good You Got It. Learn it, people. Hey, once I was the honky-tonkin' talk of the town Riding high in my bad Chevrolet I had seven pretty women, Lord, hanging on me A different one for every day Look at me now, all my women's left town And luck is getting hard to come by Well, I must confess, my life's a big mess I'm so low I could lay down and die Well, you never know just how good you've got it to you Ain't got it no more Well, you never know just how high you're flying to you fall face down on the floor And all I can do is just mourn the blues And dream about what I had before Well, you never know just how good you got it to you Ain't got it no From them buddies of mine I was cooking last night When the chips were all down So I laid everything I had on the line I knew I'd regret That hundred dollar bet But you never know until it's too late We flipped and I lost And I paid the cost When the hate fell in on the break well, you never know just how good you've got it to you Ain't got it no more well, you 
Got it till you ain't got it no more. 